the birth of Manasseh and Ephraim. Amen. They are locked inside. There are junctions in the life of Joseph. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, today we want to speak on dividing the rapture coming from the second coming. We, by the grace of God, we, we sort of say something this Sunday that opens what we shall deal with the next Sunday. We were dealing more of uh, a Bible study. You may not know it, but it's going to be a Bible study again today. Did you enjoy the Bible study the other time? A Bible study means we can ask questions. There is no law that says don't ask questions. You can say, oh, I didn't hear that. Which scripture did you refer to? And then you can just move on really well. We are happy to see all of you. Let us um, go to the scriptures before we pray. No, let's pray first because I want to begin with the scriptures immediately. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are so grateful again this morning. What a blessed time you've given us today, Lord Jesus. Father, we rejoice in the songs of Father to know your presence is available, Lord. And even if Father, you've told us you will be in our midst, Lord. There are people even in the Bible who discovered how to attract God and he came down. Father, even Balaam being a false prophet, he discovered the secret of the sacrifice and you came. Father, there are people who united, Father, in the book of Genesis chapter 10, they were in one accord. And Father, when they united, you came. But then you've come to give us a promise where two or three are, I shall be in the midst. And Heavenly Father, we are here for the right cause to hear from you. We are here, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, to manifest your life, Lord. And we feel so refreshed in our hearts to know you loved us while we were yet sinners. You loved us, Lord, and you died for us. You've given us a hope in the world. You've given us a place, oh Father, no kings of this earth would give us. Father, you are telling us our conversation. Oh, it's in heaven. Amen. Oh, God. Another scripture says our citizenship Amen. is in heaven. Amen. What a place to be, Lord Jesus. Amen. And Father, you came and shed the blood that, Father, you may make this possible for us. Amen. And Father, by your grace, we are gathered here today, this morning, Amen. thanking you, Father, for the people who will be listening in, Amen. those who will be streaming in, those who listen to this later, Father. Amen. May you have a blessing for each one of them. Amen. Establish us in the present truth Amen. and help us to walk in the light. Amen. Father, this is our time here on earth. We shall not come here back. We shall not come back on this earth in these bodies, Lord. Father, we are going to be dimensional beings. We shall move like the light. Father, time will not stop us, Lord. And Father, we want to appreciate you, Lord, to realize there is something inside of our hearts that the devil can never even take hold of the world because of what he saw in our heart, Lord. What a great restrainer. What a great hindrance, oh, Father, that the devil can never move in, oh, God. Heavenly Father, until that thing goes off the earth, together with us, then the devil can be revealed. Then the man of sin can come to the earth. What a great thing, oh, Father, we have in our hearts. We appreciate you this morning. We bless you. For those who are sick, Father, as the word will be preached, Lord, not only today, another time they'll have time to log in, Father. Speak things, Lord. There are things we are going to speak according to the way you've given it to us, Lord. But, the Father, may this be keys to open more while people are listening in. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Dividing the rapture coming from the second coming. So someone would just ask a question. Are they the same? We want to go to the theories of, how many of you are waiting for the coming of the Lord? Relax. Brother Godfrey does not understand what I mean. He's saying that because there are two words here. The rapture coming and the second coming. I did not ask how many of you are waiting for the rapture coming how many of you are waiting for the second coming? I only ask, how many of you are waiting for, this, for the coming of the Lord? Yes. We are all waiting for the coming of? Yes. But inside the coming of the Lord, there is the rapture coming of the Lord and the second coming of the Lord. I think we can even close there and go home. Except you'll say, but give us the scriptures. All of us are waiting for the coming of the Lord. But there is the rapture coming of the Lord and the second coming of the Lord. And uh, we shall deal with a few things here. We shall give examples by the grace of God. You love to go into the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Let me give you a foretaste. We shall even see the power of Matthew 16 and the power of Matthew 17. Amen? Amen. And we shall even see why the children of Israel 
missed the first coming because it carries something they never expected, yet it was written in the scripture. Oh, Stalin, that's, that's, that green is good on you. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 28. You'll be surprised the same Matthew, Matthew 17. It is in the book of Mark 9 and Luke 9. But to them, it's just like a flowing truth. But in Matthew chapter 16 and 17 are separated. And I told you the other time what we call the scriptures, the, 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 the chapters, the verses were put there for us to be able to, to make it easy. I mean, to make it easy for us to read. But this is just sometimes a flowing thought that doesn't have chapters. So when we go to Matthew chapter, <laughs> Matthew chapter 17, it says the following. Can we begin in Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 and 28? And then you will see the flowing in other, in uh, Mark chapter 9. Is it Mark chapter 9? Yeah. Mark chapter 9 and Luke chapter 9 seems to be the same thought carried over without dividing in chapters. It says this. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. With his angels, then he shall reward every man according to his works. Who is going to come? So it's not the son of David that is coming. Who is coming? Praise the Lord. Then verse 28, it says, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not test of death till they see the Son of Man coming. Have I finished it? What does your Bible say? In his kingdom. The Son of Man coming where? In his kingdom. The Son of Man coming where? In his kingdom. Ha ha. If the Son of Man is going to come in the kingdom, and you are waiting for the Son of Man to come in the kingdom, will you have missed the rapture or that will be the rapture? Because this is the coming in there. I feel like you should be seated. You may be seated. I want us to go slowly. The Son of Man coming in the kingdom. Why you guys are so trained in the scriptures already? We can even close and go home. Jesus stands up and says, There be some standing here that will not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I love the choices. I love the scriptures. We still abide with our principle of 2 Timothy 2.15. Study thyself. Be approved of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you are dividing the word of the truth, we want to divide the rapture coming and the second coming. And you see, this was a mistake the children of Israel did when Jesus came. They expected the second coming, and they didn't know the second coming and the first coming were locked in one body. It needed to be separated. So these people walked and said, he's going to come to take over the world. And then they didn't know he's going to die. So Jesus Christ came and separated the first coming from the second coming. No, that's not Bible study. That's preaching. So what has Jesus said? Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. They will stand right here <laughs> and look ahead and see there he is coming in his kingdom. Wow. That they didn't have to wait. You see some people came around and said, hey, it means these people will leave until he comes. <laughs> And then some came in 19, I remember in 1985, I read another book of Jehovah's Witness. And they said Jesus Christ actually came and ascended in his kingdom in 1914. 
and all the people who were there in 1914 will actually see him. You know what happened? They all died. <laughs> because they realized someone who, is, who was born in 1914 today would be how old? 107? Or 108? There could be very few in our country. And, means, and maybe some of them are not Jehovah's Witness, right? So that becomes futile. We want to look at the theories about the second coming of the Lord, what people think they are. And then come back to the scriptures, what does the scripture teach about the coming of the Lord, which is divided into two, the rapture coming and the second coming. Are they the same? We've already identified a scripture that says, the son of man shall come in the kingdom. We've already separated the gospel of the kingdom of God and the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. <laughs> so this coming here, is it going to affect the grace of God or going to affect the kingdom? Thank you. The son of man shall come in the kingdom. And there are people here who will see the son of man coming in the kingdom. And we've only had two types of gospels on earth. And each gospel has a coming. Now you people should be writing. There is the coming as it pertains to the gospel of the kingdom. And there is a coming that pertains to the gospel of the grace of God. All those two comings are separated in the scriptures. Amen. So if we have to qualify, why am I digging this scripture? Why don't I go to other scriptures? We are seeing there is a coming here that is connected to a kingdom. Amen. So if you took this coming and brought it to the grace of the Lord Jesus, or the grace of God or the gospel of the grace, you will have mixed the two scriptures. Because this coming is mentioning coming in the kingdom. Amen. So if it's going to come in the kingdom, then it means there are people expecting a coming in the kingdom, and this must be the kingdom people. Amen? Amen. Amen. The kingdom people were told, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And the kingdom people were also given the kingdom key. Is that true? Yes. In Matthew 60? Upon you, Matthew, we are coming back there. They were given the kingdom prayer. Hallelujah. Kingdom key and kingdom observation. And they were given a promise that there be some here. At that time, there was no Gentile right there. It was only the 12 tribes represented by the 12, uh, not apostle, disciples then, that were standing there and they were promised, you see among you. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are people who will see the kingdom. Amen. Then the Bible says, and after six days, you see how it is flowing. Matthew chapter 17 now. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Something has happened to Jesus. We want to see what has happened to Jesus if Jesus will ever look like that sometime in the near future. And when is this time when Jesus' body is transfigured, is as white as wool? His hair is white as wool. When is this time? What is the connection between how Jesus looks like with Matthew 16, 28, they shall see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Was this the Son of Man coming in the kingdom?
Thank you. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciple heard this, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Mark, uh, Mark chapter 13. No, chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Are you there? Chapter 9, verse 1 says, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with the power. They shall see the kingdom of God come with the power. The kingdom of God shall do what? Come with power. Can we go to Matthew chapter 25? You need your Bible study, right? Matthew 25, what does it say? Verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Are you seeing the Son of Man coming in his glory? And all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. What did Mark tell us? The kingdom of God will come with power. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Verse 34, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father. Where is this taking place? In heaven or on earth? Earth? Because if you have this taking place in heaven, then you'll have the sheep and the God also going to heaven to be judged. Isn't it? But you have him coming down to the earth to separate the earth, to separate the sheep from the goats. So we realize, when you go back to Mark 9, and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some here that stand here, which shall not test of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with the power. After six days, are you saying it's the same chapter now? It's not separated. After six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and lead them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining exceedingly white as snow. So as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he was not what to say, for they were so afraid. There was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear he him. Now, what they have seen is going to form a question. And the question will be, verse 11, And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribe that Elias must first come? Because at that time when they have seen Elias, this is supposed to be the end. Amen? But now Jesus, after he's been transfigured, and the voice has spoken from the cloud, saying, this is my beloved son, and all of a sudden, the cloud disappears. Jesus Christ, the glory that was inside of him, goes back inside because it didn't come from outside of him. Everything dwelled inside of him. It's like, it is zoomed back. And they saw the Jesus they knew. And they say, but the Pharisees, are always quoting Malachi 4. Because the Pharisees knew Malachi 4, there was a promise of an Elijah. And this Elijah will be before the coming of the Lord. Amen. But they have already seen an Elijah here and with the Lord Jesus Christ on the mountain. 
So it was very easy to ask the next question. Why do Pharisees say Elias must first come? Where these people were standing, they were standing in a very clear place that was only an overcast of what was to come later. The period <laughs> between Jesus, who went with them to the mountain, and the Jesus who has been transfigured is a period of 2,000 years in between. I will, I will show you in the scriptures what, when Peter looked back on Mount Transfiguration, what he called it. What did Peter call this? When he saw this Elijah and Moses and Jesus transfigured and they were witnessing what Jesus had already said in Matthew 16:28. There be some standing among you that will not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in power. So the same Jesus who stood on Mount Transfiguration, you couldn't touch him. No man could crucify such a person. Because even the disciples, oh hallelujah, fell down like dead people. And I want you to follow these two. Because they seem to follow Jesus Christ where he was all the time. Huh? So this Jesus who's standing here, he has much power. This Jesus who's on a mountain's vicaration can go through the wall. This Jesus, you can't crucify him. This is Jesus in power and glory. This is Jesus who does not even have beard. It doesn't matter how much you come and say, can you see his beards? You understand what I'm saying? It is a Jesus, hallelujah, Amen. who has already entered into a glorified body. Amen. Right there on the mountain's vicaration. And the Bible says we shall have Amen. a glory like this glorious body. Amen. Jesus standing on the mountain, hallelujah, Amen. was a sudden coming of the Lord. Amen. And these people were so scared. Who is he? Oh my God, now where am I going? Let me preach on. And then teach a little bit. This same man who's standing on the Mount Transfiguration, the effect this man had on the disciples, the same effect can be followed in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and you can discover it is the same person. Amen. This is not the one that Mary gave birth to. The one Mary gave birth to melted into this one. So don't think you are going to drop your body the way I'm dropping my coat. No. What you have will be melted. Amen. Disappear. Yes. Into a sudden glory. Amen. And that's what we are looking for. Amen. This same man on Mount Transfiguration. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the same man when Abraham saw him in Genesis 18. If I had time, I would prove to you. This same man is the one Daniel saw. And he said, I was sick for many days. I saw him and I got weak. Amen. How can you crucify such a man? You can't. Amen. That is eternity that has stepped in time. Amen. That man's transfiguration was not time in time. It was eternity in time, walking in time. Amen. You couldn't even touch him. Amen. And there was a time he could speak from that man. And there's another time he speaks from this man. There was a time they wanted to arrest him. Amen? When they wanted to arrest him, he said, we are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And then he said, I am he. And then they fell. It was not the body of Mary that Mary gave birth that was spoke. The person was saying, I'm here, and they fell. He's the man of Mount Transfiguration. Amen. That's the man who stood there. Amen. This is the man that Daniel said when I saw him. He looked, his body was like burial. And I was sick for many days. And another one came and told, told me to stand up. This man of Mount Transfiguration has no beginning, Amen. has no end. Amen. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth. Amen. And this man of Mount Transfiguration, amen, amen. came to Manoah's wife. Namuga's born, he said, I'll not preach around to preach. 
I can hear somebody say, can you flow? Yes, I want to flow. Amen. He came to Manoah's wife. Amen. When Manoah's wife saw him, she said he was terrible. She went and reported the husband. A certain man came here. Amen. And he gave me a promise. He gave me how to raise my child. He said, let this child not eat this and that and that because he's a Nazarite. And he says he looked like a man of God. He was terrible. And then this man, these were family people. They, they know if it's a spiritual thing, it will return. Amen. Then they prayed. And then this angel came again to the woman. The woman rushed to call the husband. This was a spiritual sister Amen. that had been in touch with this mighty man. Amen. This redeemer that has not even become flesh. Amen. But one day he will become flesh. Yes. And this man, when he came, and then she told the husband, come and see. Then I'm a Rudy. Can you give me a language? What do you say in Kalenjin? Kagowe. Something like that. He has returned. We are moving to Amerudi. Now, Amerudi, because you are behind the promise. He has come for you because you are behind the promise. I'm already in the spirit of the promise. And I want something done in my life. My womb was completely closed. But the man has come again. And then uh, Manoah comes and asks this man, What did you say? And the man did not say it could be this or that. Thank you. He could not, he did not say it can be this or that or this. He just said what I told the woman is the same thing. I've come to re-emphasize. Let her take it to what I tell her. Amen. Amen. I don't know whether it's the same man because he has been in the scriptures. He's the same man that asked. Monojo, I'm going. I'm going to tell you that that man is not even the rapture coming man. Yes. So how glorious will the rapture man be? This is not the man that comes in the rapture. Yes. This is the man that comes in the kingdom. Amen. You know, you could be having a bowl of beans and maize or corn. And you could try to separate abiding with the principle of Timothy. You say, I want to remove the beans, put them here. So whatever that remain, which is corn, I'll give it to so-and-so. But you can also say, I want to remove beans, put here, take corn, put here, and then I'm remaining with an empty what? An empty pole. But what I'm doing is that we want to separate sometimes beans. And then say, beans is yours. Now, they the, the, the are mixed right here. This is for you. Amen. This man said, I'm going I want to, Manoah suggests we need to give this man an offering. Don't go. It goes to show the, the man who receives offering, it must be the same God. Amen. Because he wouldn't have accepted an offering. Amen. If you want to know it's God, he accepts your offering. Amen. And then he says, you do it and hurry. And then this man had come with a fimbo mkononi. And then when they put it on a rock. And the man danced. And when the fire came from the rock, and then the man... The sacrifice was going up. The man entered into the smoke and went up. And then Manoah was such a spiritual man. He said, we are going to die because you have seen the face of the Lord. And then the wife told him, you cannot die. If you are to die, God would have revealed this thing to you. The very fact that I'm still live to manifest the presence of God, it is I'm watching the revelation of God in my life. I'm watching to see scriptures becoming flesh. I'm watching to see scriptures being understood. Like Sister Ruben said, it looks like the Bible is becoming new. When I'm seeing God taking me step by step, then he cannot kill me. Amen. This woman said he would not kill you if he had this kind of revelation. Amen. Then the man disappeared. This man comes again to Gideon. He finds Gideon, Brother Godfrey. Kill the bullock, man. This man comes to come to tell you, you have to kill the bullock of your father. You don't want to kill everything out there. Begin at home. The judgment of God starts in God's house. Destroy those things first if you want to see a revival in the seventh year. If you want to see the Midianites, Zalmuna, and Zebi taken away, kill the bullock. Don't spare a bullock right here. Then this angel came. I'm telling you, the same man of Mount Transfiguration. Amen. Huh? Then he also didn't know it's him. And the man gave him the victory. Told him, do this, gather the people, do this, do this. 
and the man was trying to prove him it was the same man. Amen. This is the same man that made Jacob at the pineal after Jacob, after Joseph had been born. It's the same man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The man is in the entire book of Revelation, in the entire Old Testament. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. And this is the same man that visited Abraham. Amen. When he visited Abraham, Abraham stood with him in the morning. And the man heard, in the evening he started turning. The hair became white as wool. And the eyes were flames of fire. And the cattle moved from the west up to the pubs. Amen. And his voice was like the voice of many waters. Hallelujah. And the man started, and because the man had entered the judgment seat of the nations. The judgment seat of the nations. And Abraham was standing right there. Because the time to be judged of the nations had come. Amen. And Abraham put on his priesthood attire. And he studied in the city. And he called him the judge of the whole earth. The same man. Amen. This is the same man who came out of the very furnace. Amen. And he said, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. This man has always been around. Yeah. But this was way before he took on flesh. Amen. But he has a better promise for you. Amen. 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 I don't know which part of my notes I am because I'm not using my notes anymore. Praise the Lord. Amen. Could this be the same man? That the Bible say? And in the morning of the resurrection, when the women were going to the grave Amen. with some ointment, is this the same man who came down from heaven with an earthquake and rolled away the stone? And the Bible said when he came, there were people who were guarding the grave. They were also like dead men. Could this be the same man that in his presence there are dead people as it were? Wow. So what kind of Bible study is this? That looks more of a preaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. This man when he came, he rolled away the stone and sat on that stone. And the Bible says the, the guardians, the, the, is it called the guardians? No. The guards. Why well, how do they mean the guardians? The guards who are guarding the Jesus Christ does, does not resurrect. The Bible says they fell down like dead men. Who is this man that Abraham fell down like a dead man? Who is this man that Daniel fell down like a dead man? Who is this man that came to Gideon? Who is this man that came to Jacob? Who is this man that he came? Who is this man? Amen. He's the same man Isaiah saw. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And Isaiah was scared. Are you seeing this man? Praise the Lord. Yeah. <coughs> Who is this man? When he came, he had been transfigured. Are you seeing these are two people here? Simon, Peter, and James, and John were never scared of Jesus at any time. In fact, in verse 16, chapter 16, Simon Peter rebuked Jesus. After he's been given the keys, Simon Peter goes ahead and rebukes Jesus. But on man's transfiguration, he's hiding. Amen. Huh? Brothers, even if this man did not die, he already had the body right there with him. Amen. And you people, you do not know what happens to you when you receive Christ in your heart. Amen. You do not know what happens in that spiritual dimension of who you are. Amen. So where was that glory? It was in Jesus. Amen. It just passed through the cloth, passed through the skin, and here he was. With the white hair, his face as if it were the sun. Could this be the same man we are finding in Revelation 1. Can we call Revelation 1? 
Verse 14. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were flame of fire, and his feet like unto the brass as if he burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Do you know yet the sound of many waters in the book of Daniel as well? Yes? Daniel 7. And he had in his right hand seven stars, out of his mouth went a sharp to edge sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me. Did he lay his right hand upon, uh, upon Daniel as well? And he said, if you are not, I'm the first and the last, I'm he that liveth, and was dead. This is Christ Jesus. Amen. He has now entered in the same body. He entered on Mount Transfiguration. Amen. Are we together so far? Amen. Now, when we go to back, back to Matthew 16, 28, it is called the coming. You are still wondering how do I connect the coming with Matthew 17? We can just go to the scripture to give us that. Amen? We want to look at Peter. What does Peter call it? I don't know whether I have another scripture. Oh, thank God my time is moving well. It's good to be fast sometimes. Let us go to the book of um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. We want to see what does Peter call Matthew 17. What is Matthew 17? Uh-uh. Don't go to the second coming yet. A coming. Why am I saying it's a coming? Because Matthew 16, 28 says, there will be people among you who will not test of death until they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. And then after six days, they see him coming. But this coming has a larger to it and has Moses to it. So when he stepped in what is called this coming, then you could not restrain Moses and Elijah from joining the vision. So this is a coming that Moses and Elijah are connected to. Amen. Is that the coming that you are expecting? Praise the Lord. Don't just say no. Just shut up, right? <laughs> just shut up and let's go slowly with the scriptures. It is a coming. Now, can I go very fast before we go to First Peter? It is, there are different theories about the coming of the Lord. One of the theories, I want to just get it from my memory, is when you die, people say the coming of the Lord has taken place in his life. And the people are preaching it in our, one of our countries. They say there is no literal coming of the Lord. When you die, I was somewhere in a funeral, and the preacher stood and said, you see, Jesus said, his coming is going to be like a thief. This brother just left here and then went to the hospital and he died. That was the coming of the Lord as a thief. Huh? So if you identify Moses and Elijah are connected to the coming. So where is Moses and Elijah here? So that cannot be. Another coming, people say, it happened in the day of Pe Pentecost. When he said, I'll come to you. That's not the coming that brings you here. The coming of Pentecost is not what to bring you, yet it's a coming, right? Then there is another coming, people say, he said, where two or three are gathered, I will be in their midst. Isn't that a coming? That's a coming, isn't it? But that coming doesn't have Moses and Elijah, so it can't be the coming of Mount Transfiguration, right? What is another coming they talk about? They talk about the destruction of the temple. Amen? They say when Titus came to destroy the temple, that was the coming of the Lord. And then, mainly in the Catholic Church, they don't think there is a coming of the Lord. What is he going to come for? While the Pope is already the representative of him, and the kingdom of heaven has already been established on earth, when we shall convert all the people under the kingdom, and then that thing will be over. But it's not going to come. You are saying, where did you get it? I wanted to be the first black book. <laughs> so I read. Let's go to Mgina and Chokosa. I'm not designing and Chokosa, as much as I are the Pope. Praise the Lord! <laughs> and he said, they, they, they said, that's why they love Peter and not Paul. 
And that's why they call Peter the first pope, because they can relate with the Peter very well. The gospel of Paul, even the so-called saved, are confused. It's not a small thing. And then the Muslim, they believe the Lord is going to come, but not Jesus, of course. So they want to conquer the whole world for him. Everyone, every religion has this bit of the coming of a deity or a God. Then we are coming to what Peter was scared of. We are coming to what Jesus, then you find in the book of St. John chapter 20, verse 21, I'm not sure, right there. I'm confusing through, but right there, the Bible says, no, it should be 21. When Simon Peter asked the Lord, what are you going to do with this one that leans in your bosom? Then Jesus asked, what is it to you if he tarries till I come? And then the Bible says, the rumor went around that John will not die until he sees the Lord return. And you know exactly he did. When he said, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day, he actually saw it. So that coming in which John was in the spirit is not the coming of the rapture. This is a different kind of a coming because of the way he looks like. The coming that involves the rapture, his picture is not given. Amen? Amen. But the coming in the kingdom, his picture was taken by the people that had an experience. I want you to collect the people who had this visitation, take them and throw him in the coming of the kingdom. And then you will see who is coming to Israel. Then you will see if there is a nation that will ever fight this man. But God said, I'm not going to fight so much like that. He comes to this man called Jacob and gives Jacob strength and tells Jacob, no nation on earth will fight. Amen. Russia will come up. Amen. America will come up Amen. wanting to be a superpower. But I want to tell you when this Jacob meets this man. Amen. When Jacob meets this man. Amen. And I want to say, Kidogo, in inspiration, when you meet this man in your heart, Amen. then nothing can separate you from the love of God. When you meet this man in your heart, then nothing else matters in your life. Amen. Amen. You stand there and you can praise when it is raining. Amen. You can praise when you are sick. You can disgrace the devil when you have this man. Amen. You can smile at the storm. When that man meets, Amen. I have many scriptures here. When this man meets Jacob, even Esau can't handle Jacob. Amen. When he meets Jacob like this, and Esau is coming with the 400 soldiers, but some, this man has slipped down secretly, and he's meeting Jacob between these two nations, Laban, the Syrian, and Edom. And the man is coming in between here. When Esau looks at this man, he hugs him and weeps on his shoulder. The man has already been strengthened in his prayer meeting. A man has met God in a prayer meeting. Yeah. Now he's going out to bold enough and say, come, come baby, come. Yeah. Come whatever you want to do, come over now. I've had a secret meeting with the man that Simon Peter saw, John saw, Daniel saw, Gideon saw, Manoah saw, Samson saw, Moses saw, Abraham saw, and he appeared to Paul on his road to Damascus. And Paul said, he also was seen of me. When you meet such a man, Amen. it doesn't matter the sickness. Amen. Amen. We are the candidates of that kind of a vindication. Amen. We are the candidate of that kind of visitation. Amen. On our new birth, we receive such a man. Amen. And when you receive such a man, there is no breaking in between. Amen. From the moment you receive him, all the way Amen. up to the body change. Amen. If I wish I had time, I would show you the mystery of God breaks in the middle and there is a divine pause. But the mystery of Christ from when he came to Paul in Acts 9 all the way up to the body change. Amen. So there is nothing called restoration. Restoration to what? The mystery of Christ has no restoration. It is full. Amen. But these guys, they will leave it. They left their country. They must be restored to their country. They left God. They must be restored to God. They must be given a title date to their inheritance. I want to say when I receive the Holy Ghost, it has passed from death into life. It is over. 
It is finished. I'm just growing in him. And one of these days, I shall be changed, not by some thunder coming from somewhere. I'll be changed by the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. If he dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall change your mortal body. Amen. Christ has put the power within me. Amen. What did Paul say? Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Amen. Jesus Christ in you. If you have got Jesus Christ in you, Amen. brother, I can even walk closing my eyes. I cannot look for a cloud because he's inside here. Amen. I cannot look for nothing because the hope of glory is inside of me. Amen. The power to change me is inside of me. I just want to make sure I've got the power. Amen. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Oh, we've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we shall not be defeated. Oh, yes, we've got the power in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Dear in Dimbambo. Mozena la ye esu dirindim bambo. I don't know that language. Mozena la yesu. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That there is nothing I'm waiting for. Amen. I'm not waiting for no cloud. Amen. I'm not waiting for no moon. Amen. I'm not waiting for no thunder. Amen. The power of God put it in me. And that's why I stand today. That is my power. It is inside of me. He has put me the righteousness. The Bible says he became sin that I was. I could become the righteousness of God. Peter, tell us what you saw. Peter, what did you see? We realize what we call the coming of the Lord is divided into two. The rapture coming and him coming in the kingdom. Because there are two sets of people here. You people, you realize I'm just saying the same thing. The gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? That these people have got different visitation. Did we see last Sunday even the resurrection is different? Amen. One has got a secret, mysterious resurrection. Another one has a resurrection that is called the first resurrection. By the way, where is Godfrey? I know you are out there. Can you read for me John chapter 5 verse 28? Yes. Marvel not. No, I want you to be loud. Marvel not. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. In the which all that are in the grave. In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Shall hear his voice. And shall come forth. And shall come forth. They that have. Done good. Those who have done good, the of life. Res uh, they will have a resurrection of life. And, they that have done evil. and those who have done evil, have the, of have the resurrection of damnation. Is that your resurrection no. that is connected to the works? No, no. That they will resurrect those who have done good. I want to tell you, my friend, if you are looking for the good Simon has done, Go look for it in Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he represented Amen. me. Even for the resurrection is right there. Amen. But there are people who are going to stand individually. And be weighed on the scales. To find out what they have done if it is good. But I want to tell you he took it all. Amen. He took it all. Amen. Amen. He took it all. Amen. 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 You want to ask me about resurrection? Ask him. You want to ask me about body change? Ask him. Amen. The book of Isaiah says, ask me the affair, the affairs of my children. Amen. Let's go to Peter now. We're going to Second Peter. We want to see Peter coming in Second Peter, and we shall follow Peter in what we call the Olivet Discourse. It has been, it's called the Olivet Discourse. We see what is Simon Peter looking for. 
I want to say before I forget, Simon Peter and the rest of the other disciples were not looking for the rapture coming. The rapture coming was a mystery that only Paul would tap in it. Are we, are, we, are we together? Amen. Are we in 1 Corinthians 15, 51? Behold, I tell you the mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. He called it a mystery. Simon Peter never captured that. Simon was a kingdom person waiting for the son of man to come in the kingdom. And when he comes in the kingdom, he's going to whip down all the Russians. And Russians should be warned today. If you don't know how to treat Israel, you are a God nation. Because the blessing that God gave Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, he that curses you shall be cursed, he that blesses you shall be blessed, is carried all the way up to Matthew 25. Amen. Two groups of people. And that will depend on how you treated Israel. My friend, I want to tell you, we may not even go to Israel. We only pray for those people. We have got a sure word here. Something that has made us new creation. Amen. New creation means Amen. new crea created newly. Amen. Umeumbo upia. How can you exist in the Old Testament when the Bible says you are a new creature in Christ Jesus? Amen. How can you be new today and you are there in the Old Testament? You know the problem we have? I was also a victim of that. We have something we call replacement theology. Where we have also what they call typologists. You want to type that with this and look like Israel has lost their blessing and they have been replaced by the church. Or you stand and say the church is Israel spiritual. That is also fake. You also can say this church is an extension or on an overflow of Jesus that the blessing Jesus had has now found their way. No! Because there is no place where the Old Testament believers and even the little flock who are called the body of Christ. The word, the body of Christ is only found in the gospel of Paul. Amen. And the word, the new creature is only found in the gospel of Paul. Amen. It can't be a new creature if it is a duplicate of Israel. It can't be a new creature if it is an extension of Israel. It can't be a new creature, even spiritual Israel. Amen. Spiritual is just spiritual, natural is natural. But this is a new creature. Amen. New creature means another work. Amen. The Bible says we were his workmanship. Amen. Created in him. Amen. Not created in Adam. Adam was a man born of a woman. Amen. Then Job comes and talks about a man. A man created by God, that is Adam. Then Job 14 brings another man. Say this is a man born of a woman. Amen. But then there is another man in the kingdom. Amen. Then there is another man in Christ. Amen. You are not the man born of a woman anymore. Amen. As the young man said the other time, from this day we do not know any man according to the flesh anymore. Amen. Not even Jesus. Amen. We didn't even know Jesus according to the flesh. But by the revelation of him, Amen. Adam was a man created by God. Amen. And all who were born were men, born of women. Then Jesus comes and introduces a people of the kingdom, Amen. according to prophecy. Amen. But then Paul comes and says, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Then Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore no condemnation Amen. to those who are in Christ. Amen. There is someone in Christ. Amen. That's a different man. Amen. Let's go to Peter. We are reading Peter from verse 15. Now I want you to watch some words there. Oh, hallelujah. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my, deep, my disease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fable when we made known unto you power, the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did, Mark, what did Mark tell us? Did Mark tell us about power? Now Jesus, 
Paul, uh, this man Peter is saying, for we've not followed cunningly the verse fable, when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord. Wow. It means Peter, while he was preaching, he was preaching the power and the coming. Amen. But why did he see the power and the coming? Peter, can you tell us? He says, For we have not followed cunning diverse fable, when we made not unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitness of his majesty. He's now talking about coming, he's talking about power, and he's talking about something called the majesty. And then he said, we are eyewitnesses. It means we saw it. We were there when it happened. Amen. We were there when the majesty came. Amen. We were there when the glory came. We were there when the power came. We were there when the coming came. Amen. But I can also add, you were there when Moses and Elijah came. When Moses and Elijah came, what was that coming called? The coming of the Son of Man in the kingdom. Amen. Then verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him on the holy mount. Ha! Simon Peter now tell us what Mount Transfiguration was. It was the power and the coming of the Lord. Amen. You can't give me such a weak amen. amen. You know, Peter says, when we made known unto you the power and the coming of the Lord. Those were not fables. Now, I want to ask a question. If it was you that was with Jesus and someone asks you, Simon, can you remember what is the most glorious moment you were with Jesus? I will tell you, look here. I never walked on the water. He called me and I, Simon, the son of, son of Jonah, I actually walked on the water. But Simon Peter was there when Lazarus was resurrected, when Jairus' daughter resurrected, when the son of the Nain woman resurrected. He was there when Jesus multiplied the bread. He was there when Jesus cast the tree. He was there when Jesus Christ walked on the water. But when the time comes, he says, I only picked one thing, the coming of the Lord. He said, we have not followed fables. When we made not unto you the power and the coming of the Lord, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. When the voice came from the excellent glory and said, that's my beloved son, hear ye him. We were standing right there. Amen. So what we are making known unto you is the coming and the power. Amen. If we go back to Matthew 16, 28, there will be people among you. That will not test of death until they see the Son of Man coming. And Simon Peter saw, and then he says, I'm a witness. Amen. 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 Then Peter, John, was followed. Oh God. I'm saying it, but you not get it. I can hear you praying and say, I'm going to get it. Amen. Amen. Now, what was this that Simon Peter saw? Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's have this. This was Jesus. Then all of a sudden, on transfiguration, this thing was removed. And another person stepped from behind the curtain. Amen. That thing was called apocalypse. Unveiling. Amen. A, an apocalypse Amen. and unveiling Amen. removing the veil and taking back the veil on himself Amen. when John says the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave him means the removing of the veil the removing of the screens the removing of the blinders of Jesus that now people can see him and he's going to come like that with the power Amen. he's not the same weak Jesus it is now Jesus now in power. That is now the king 
coming as promised to Israel. Amen. That is the one they were expecting, but the one that he came, he came with the veil. Amen. But there is a promise in 2 Corinthians that that veil shall be removed and they shall see God. Amen. So when someone stands and says, can you see him? And you are seeing the back of Simon Shiva, you deceiver of men. The Bible says the Lord himself shall come. He's not going to come with a veil. He's not going to come with another person. It is the Lord himself. You are not the candidate of meeting God in your pastor. You are not a candidate of meeting God in an apostle. You are a candidate of meeting God himself. That is the Savior. So Peter says, I was there. And Moses was connected to it. Did Jesus, did Moses, uh, did Peter call that mountain's vicaration a coming? He calls it a coming. So if he calls it a coming, does it agree w w with what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 28? There be somewhere will know death of death until they see the Son of Man coming. So was that the Son of Man coming? Thank you. Did John see the same thing? Did the effect it had on John in Revelation 1, 7, the same effect it had on John in Matthew 17? Is it the same effect it had on Daniel? Is it the same effect it had on Abraham? Now, if you are a believer of such a person, then this man died. When this man died, he removed down that veil. And then he met those who are going to Emmaus. They couldn't recognize him, a difference of only three days. He had now stepped in that body. And then he joined these guys who are going to Emmaus and asked them a question. Why are you sad? What is the manner of the conversation you are having among yourself? And you're sad. I like when that man comes and joins you. Yes, Amen. He comes and follows you up. Amen. Amen. And any person who has had a revelation of that man, Shauriako. You are initiated. Amen. He will follow you. Amen. In tribulation, he will follow you. Amen. In famine, he will be there. Amen. In persecution, he will be there. Amen. Because nothing can separate you Amen. from the love of God. Amen. He will always be there. Amen. And then they told him, what do you mean? Are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Haven't you heard of this man, Jesus? How the Pharisees took him and crucified him. And we trusted he is the one to deliver Israel. Then Jesus spoke and said, you fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophet had spoken. Wasn't Jesus not supposed to suffer and enter into his glory? Amen. Two things. So they missed the suffering Jesus and expected a glorified Jesus. And that's how they missed him. They could not separate the first coming from the second coming. Now, while we are there, can we go to Matthew 16? Some of you remember the message we preached one time on the second coming hid in the first coming. Jesus Christ is in the coast of Caesarea. And he's asking the people, whom do men say I the son of man am? And they say, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, and, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Ha ha! While people are saying is Jeremiah, he's John the Baptist, Simon Peter has gotten a revelation of the first coming. Uh -uh. I didn't want to take what I can take now. People are saying he's Jeremiah, he's John, he's Elias, he's one of the prophets. But Simon Peter is saying, you are the Christ. Which means this is the first coming. Another place saying, the Christ that should come in the world. Wow! Then Jesus said, blessed art thou Jonah, son of Jonah, for flesh never revealed this unto you. Who revealed? Jesus to Peter. 
He revealed the first coming. And Jesus and Simon Peter was standing in the first coming. He did not realize inside the first coming is locked the second coming. Amen. But when he goes to a mountain's vicaration, then he will realize it was like, oh my God, you didn't get it. Amen. What did he say when he came to Mount Transvicaration? When we made known unto you the power and the coming, that was not making known the power of a baby in the manger, although that was also the coming of the Lord. He was talking about Jesus and the power of the coming. Amen. And he said there was a majesty connected to it. This is not the Jesus of Matthew 16. Matthew 16 never had Moses. It never had a cloud. It never had Elijah. It never had a voice. It was Jesus wrapped. In the flesh, that was the first coming. Then this Jesus talks to Peter about the man of Matthew 17 that I'll die and enter into a body. Then Simon Peter, the Bible says, he called him aside and started rebuking. I like that translation. He called him aside. Then he told him, sit down and told him, you cannot talk the way you talked. You cannot preach like that. How can you say you are going to die? And Simon Peter must have quoted the scripture. Christ abideth forever. Because God said he will never, they will never lack a man. And then he told Simon, he, 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 Samuel told David that his kingdom, there will never be an end. How can you say that? Then Jesus looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan. The same Simon Peter has understood the first coming of the Lord. But Jesus is talking about the things of the second coming. He's talking about the body of the second coming. Then Simon Peter, when he stands there, listen to me, hey. When he stands there, after he has received the Holy Ghost, he's been strengthened. He looks back on Mount Transvicaration and he tells them, guys, when we met none unto you the power and the coming, we were there. Now, this one should help you to realize that some scriptures written in the Bible that are yet future, yet they have already been forecasted in the Bible. Amen. When we met not new, the power and the coming, all the commentaries will tell you that is the second coming. If you read Schofield, Schofield the notes on Matthew 17, they will tell you it's the second coming. Schofield, can I read for you what Schofield says? Schofield says, Moses, Glorify a representation of the dream to have passed through death into the kingdom. That was Moses. Elijah glorified represented the redeemed who have entered the kingdom by translation. Are you using also using the word kingdom? Are you saying Moses and Elijah the kingdom people because they came when the kingdom was being ushered in? Amen. Are you saying which gospel these people would belong to? Yes. The gospel of the kingdom because they are accompanying the king. Amen. Eh? Amen. This man says, Peter, James, and John, not glorified, represented for the moment of Israel in the flesh in the future kingdom. The multitude at the foot of the mountain represented representative of the nations who are to be brought into the kingdom after it is established over Israel. This was a good man. You got those, those notes? If you go to Lakin, Larkin says exactly that again. I have the book of Larkin here. I have Larkin's book here called The Revelation. He says the same thing there. And then I have another the book of William Branham. He says the same thing again. Praise the Lord. Amen. A good man who learns from others. Amen. Like another preacher would do. But when you put that says the Lord, we tell you now, just a minute. Not that says the Lord. Scofield said it here. Anybody who has got Scofield Bible, he says Moses represented the dead. Elijah represented the translated. Larkin said it, and Branham said it. And they seem to make a point. Except I differ with the three of them. Let me also say mine. This had to do with the kingdom and not to do with the rapture. Amen. 
Because of the element of things found in that vision. Elijah, Moses, majesty, cloud, there are others here who will not protest test of death until they see the son of man coming in the kingdom. That is not what I am waiting. Amen. Let's go to second Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Now let us differentiate the coming the second coming the rapture coming from the second coming. I've got scriptures I'll give it to you. First Thessalonians, verse 13, First Thessalonians 4, 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if we just believe Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with Elijah and Moses. The Lord himself shall descend with Moses and Elijah. What does it say? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we shall ever be with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction which shall come upon them with a child, as as a travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, you are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, there is a coming... Where he comes as a thief. And there is a coming where I don't even need to write to you. Because you know perfectly. Ha <laughs> ha. So the rapture coming, he does not come like a thief to you. Amen. But to the children of Israel, the disciples that were told, watch and pray. For you do not know when the Son of Man cometh. Amen. And then he said, giving parables. Helen, listen to me. The coming of the rapture is a secret revealed and is a power laying inside of you. Amen. But the children of Israel who are waiting for the second coming have nothing inside of them yet. Amen. So they have to look for him out there. Amen. They have looked for a cloud. But for you, you have it inside of you. Amen. I'm not reading about what is happening with Russia and Ukraine. Let it continue. But that has to do with the kingdoms of the earth. Amen. But I want to tell you, if the same power that raised Christ from the dead, Amen. the Lord himself shall descend. Amen. He's not descending and he's not going to tag the ground. Amen. I shall meet the Lord in the air. Amen. What shall take him in the Lord in the air? No message of the hour shall do it. What shall do it is the same spirit Amen. that raised Christ from the dead. Amen. If he dwelleth in you, Amen. you shall go up to meet the Lord in the air, Amen. and forever we shall be with him. Amen. The rapture coming of the Lord, it is for you, the body of Christ. Amen. The second coming, it is for Israel. He will be coming in the kingdom. But for me, he's coming to rapture me. Amen. You can't confuse the two. Amen. Paul, why didn't you talk about Peter? Why, Paul, why didn't you talk about Elijah and Moses? 
Because these two comings are separate. And if the coming of Elijah and Moses and Jesus means the same one you are waiting for, then Jesus would have been wrong to say there will be some standing here who will see the coming of the Son of Man in the kingdom. Coming where? Now don't be quiet on me now. Because we have separated the gospel of the grace of God and the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom has a coming. Amen. The gospel of the grace has a coming. Amen. The gospel of the grace has the shout, the voice, and the trump. The, go the gospel of the kingdom has Moses, Jesus, and Elijah. How can you confuse the two? One is secret coming, another one, every eye shall see him. Amen. Can we read together? Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. But before I do that, I want you to capture this. That Matthew 16 was the first coming that was revealed to Peter. Amen. He even missed the second coming, yet he saw it. Amen. Jesus had said that people will stand among you that shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming, my friends. When it says coming in the kingdom, actually I turn on the other side of the bed. When I'm reading, it say coming in the kingdom, I turn on the other side of the bed. I know that's not me. I know some of you are saying you are telling us so much about the false Elijahs and the false Moseses. If someone claims he has got the ministry of Moses and Elijah, do you know where he's put himself? In the kingdom. You know when someone will go to the mountain and try to explain something, and he says, here he, Moses was there, and you have been promised a Moses, and then there will be the third Exodus. My friend, just go back to the book of Moses and find out, Moses, God promised. I showed you a picture while I descended in Sao Paulo. I sat next to a young, young man. I saw the way he had put on that thing. I don't know what they call it. He looked like a rabbi. I moved very close. People had... Uh, the, the, we were coming through uh, Istanbul. And then I went because he was an Israel. I told him, he spoke English. I told him, tell me more about the religion. Then he told me, for me, I'm a son of a rabbi. My father is called Noah. He's the head of the synagogue in Sao Paulo. I do not even qualify to read the Torah. It's only a rabbi who can read the Torah. We talked, he talked like he had some few books. When we descended in Quarulos, I met his father, two rabbis, Noah and Isaiah. They were all rabbis. Because the son was just speaking English, I asked him a question. Do you know which tribe you come from? This man told me, we do not know. We are waiting for Elijah to tell us which tribe we come from. And we are waiting for Elijah to foran Meshach bin Dawood. They know. I showed you the picture, you remember? And then I asked him a question. Who is Meshach bin Dawood? Is he a prophet? He told me more than a prophet. It is only the Kohen who know which tribe. Kohen are priests. We are waiting for Elijah to tell us which tribe we come from. It was very exciting in my heart. Amen. Three years later, I... When I was coming from Brazil, I came through Ethiopia. I found a young rabbi. That one doesn't know English. So we are using the translator. And I told him, those one, I asked them, who will be this son of David? They told me, we don't have even a name for him. A prophet say more than a prophet. But the other younger rabbi told me, he will be, that man we are calling Meshach bin Dawood, will be wiser than Solomon and he'll be a prophet on the likes of Moses so we are looking at Moses to know what this man will be because Moses said God shall raise up a prophet like an aunt to me so they know what they're looking for so when someone comes and claims he's a Moses find out whether Moses had a dream or a vision in his life you'll find Moses never had that and you see, Jesus Christ never had a vision or a dream in his life. 
You are saying he had vision. Why would he have visions when he said the things that I do is not me, but the Father that dwelleth in me? He didn't have to see anything outside of himself. It was right inside. But for me, I can see a vision. You can see a vision. Don't see some little visions here and come and tell us you are Moses. Because Balaam saw vision about the coming of the Lord. And the visions and the prophecy of Balaam was 100% right and he was a false prophet. So identifying as false prophet, I was telling my wife the other day, knowing a false prophet is not this basic thing that he prophesied and it never came to pass, therefore he's a false prophet. No! He can prophesy and it comes to pass and he's a false prophet. Amen. Balaam saw the coming of the Lord and he called him a star. No man had called Jesus a star in the Bible. Only this false prophet. He said, out of Jacob shall a star arise. And the star arose. And the magus followed the star. And it led the star to Jesus Christ. Was that prophecy true? But was Balaam false? Don't scare people with divisions and healings. Jesus said, they will do miracles in my name. And I will tell them I didn't know you. You must have something better to identify you as a Christian than just the manifestation of the spirit. Amen. Ah. And I strongly believe you cannot be bewitched. That is true. Thank you. I strongly believe when this woman, with this man Balaam looked at Jacob and he said, Jacob, on Jacob there is no enchantment. On Jacob there is no what? Another word. There is no divination. And now you are a person, a new creature in Christ. I'm in this condition because I'm to a meniroga. Who has bewitched you? Raise up your faith and refuse these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Amen. Paul says in the book of Thessalonians Amen. that God may, God may sanctify you wholly, your body, your spirit, and your soul. Amen. He is busy to take care of your body, Amen. your spirit, and your soul, and that's who you are. Amen. Amen. Come, I can get saved. If I'm saved and someone in Hayaga can bewitch me. <laughs> I can say to my son somewhere, maybe I want to build a house. And this Muchawi can come and take that sand and go and wrap it and then I can't build my house. Then I'm not saved. Then Jesus doesn't love me. I want to say, you devil, you are defeated. Amen. It doesn't matter, no enchantment on the blood of Jesus. No enchantment on a person who is a Christian. I draw your paper, your mamenda, not when I'm saved. I had my mamenda and my mamenda, everything before I got saved. Now I am saved, there is no enchantment. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. They say they're waiting for him to come. They know the person that is coming. They're waiting for a kingdom. But Jesus Christ came and introduced something for the kingdom. You must be born again. Because that kingdom, do you know, had no, had no new birth. Although there was a promise in the Old Testament. Go preach and tell them, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Isn't it? Do you want to preach that in Matthew 3? Jesus in Matthew 4? The disciples in Matthew 10. Did they have manifestation? Heal the sick. Raise the dead, cleanse the leper, and tell them, the king, don't go to the Gentiles. But now, these people wanted Jesus just to come like this, and then they enter into a kingdom. That was a promise. But the suffering Jesus had to come first. Amen. And there was a promise for a suffering Jesus to give them a bath, to give them a new spirit, to give them the Holy Spirit, Amen. then to write on their hearts the tabernacle, the, 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 the commandment, which shall be done again in future. So we are looking at what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, the Lord himself shall descend with a shout and the voice of the ark. Ha ha. If you want to say it is the same thing, then you have to remove the archangel and put Moses. You have to remove the archangel in this coming and put Moses. So this idea of saying that the Moses will be here, Elijah will be here, I'm telling that is impersonation. 
Moses never came to the Gentiles, and he will never. Elijah never came to the Gentiles, and he will never. Amen. Because when these people fast, when they were waiting for Jesus to come, we say Elijah was enjoying in this coming. Elijah is connected to the first coming, and Elijah is connected to the second coming, but Elijah is not connected to the rapture coming. Amen. I repeat, Amen. Elijah was connected to the first coming as who? John the Baptist. Is that true? Amen. Behold, eh, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Behold, I send my messenger before my face, and the Lord whom thou seekest shall soon come in his temple. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and the dreadful day of the Lord comes. And he shall turn the heart. What is the need? Remember the law of Moses on Mount Horeb. You are nowhere to remember the law of Moses. Amen. Because there is no nation that God had called. According to Numbers 23 verse 9, Israel is separated from the nations. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8, when God gave the inheritance of the nations, he did it according to the number of the children of Israel. But he said, Israel shall be my portion. Amen. 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 And he reserved Israel for himself. And Israel in the kingdom, nations will give him tribute. The way you pay taxes to the government. A really true functioning government, according to me, should not have an MIF World Bank borrowing the money from them or lending. They should have the money from these people. Amen. Those people who have got rice in Mwea and Kisumu, those who have got wheat in Rift Valley, those who have got the rest of the other things, they are taxed. Their money goes to the government. Amen? You are taxed, isn't it? And then after that has been done, the money is allocated, it comes back to you and it goes back and it comes back. That is tithe. You call it tax. God calls it tithe. Huh? And when you don't pay taxes, KRA or IRS comes for you. When you don't pay tithe, God was as God. He says KRA and his IRS. People can auction your building, your home because of the taxes. God also has that. They have nothing new. You remember Jesus Christ? He needed to pay the tax for the temple and he needed to pay the tax for the government. When they took him in Matthew 17, and they asked him, is it awful to pay? Tribute to Caesar? You remember another place? They were supposed to pay the, t the money for the temple. And then he sent someone Peter in the fishing and they said, take to go look for the fish. But he said something very important there. He said, to whom do the kings of the earth tax? And then Simon Peter says, to the strangers. And then Jesus said, yeah, then the children of the kingdom are free. But lest we offend them, go in the river, the first fish you come, you come across, remove it, open the mouth and get two. One for you, one for me. But sometimes you take both. You say, all of them are mine. <laughs> but he said, when the fish comes, when you fish that fish, open the mouth. Amen. Open the mouth, you will get inside the mouth of that fish what belongs to him and what belongs to you. And the judge said, Amen. But some opened the mouth of the fish and they look in the mouth, they found two coins, they say they're all mine. But Jesus said, One is for me, another one is for. Praise the Lord. Amen. You love, give him a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Now, what is God doing with the body of Christ? When we shall come in the future to show, to show you the purpose of the heaven and the purpose of the earth, then you'll understand what is your destiny. Then we shall go in the book of Revelation. Aren't you glad I've not mentioned nobody? <laughs> and I'm not going to mention? To show we have so plenty here, we don't have to mention nobody. You can just preach and move on until you guys tell me now, pastor, is enough, two hours is enough. Amen. We have so much here, we don't have to mention nobody. Amen. Just preach the scripture. Amen. I'm showing you the first coming and the second coming is to Israel. Amen. 
But the rapture coming is to the body. And I've shown you the first coming was connected with the larger and the second coming is connected to the larger. The and the all Israelites. First coming, Elijah had to come. He shall go in the spirit and the power of Elijah. And when he was asked, are you Elias? What did he say? He said, no. Was he contradicting the scriptures? No, he wasn't. Because he was not Elias. The promise say he will come in the spirit and the power of Elias. To turn the heart of the fathers. Those who are coming out of the hard hearts. Whose heart you would, you would divorce a wife for whatever reason. Amen? Amen? And the people that were told by Jesus, unless you are converted and your hearts be like the children, you can no way see the kingdom. These were the kingdom people. Then John started turning the hearts. He turned the heart of Peter and James and John. Because those were his disciples. When they saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the people whose heart had been turned followed Jesus. Amen. Those who refused John, who killed John, never followed Jesus. Are we together so far? Amen. And then in the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came Amen. to write the laws on their hearts. Amen. As promised in Jeremiah 31. Amen. And even in Hebrews 8, which shall be future. But now there is a promise of turning the hearts of the children to the father. We all agreed it can't be the same person. The first people whose hearts were turned were not Gentiles. They were the people that God warned and said, remember the law of Moses and the commandment, the statute on Mount Horeb. Those are the people who remember. Because I'm going to do something like I did on Mount Horeb. But I will send you Elijah before I do the same exact thing. What did he do on Mount Horeb? Write the laws. On the tablets of sin. Now you people remember that again. I will stand Elijah this time. I'm not going to write before Elijah comes. That time there was no Elijah. I write on the tablets of stone. But now Elijah is coming for another writing. 50 days after the lamb was sacrificed. Mount Sinai was 50 days after the lamb from Egypt. And that's how Israel celebrated Pentecost. They celebrated Pentecost for two reasons. One was a agricultural festival where they brought the two loaves 50 days after the wave offering. And then the next was in commemoration of the writing of the law 50 days later. Amen. Then now this time God is saying, I'm going to write my new laws on your hearts. Amen. And then he says, your hearts cannot accommodate this. I will now turn, give you a heart of flesh. Amen. I'll give you a new spirit and Amen. in your spirit, my spirit. Amen. And I will cause you now to walk in my statues. So, Elijah, come now. Preach. Turn the hearts. In the day of Pentecost, the same fire Amen. that was in the day of Mount Sinai. Amen. There was another Mount Sinai in the day of Pentecost. Amen. It was now writing on the hearts of the people. Amen. But I want to tell you, you are not the new law written. Amen. You are the epistles of Christ. Amen. The new body does not have the commandment. Amen. You people. Anytime you read in the Bible, those who keep the commandments run away. When you read in Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 13, here is the patience of the saints who give the commandment. That is not you. The commandments was first of all issued a set of many commandments by Moses. They keep them. But my friend, there is grace. Amen. There is grace for this person. Amen. I'm proving to you, first coming, Elijah was connected. Amen. Second coming, Elijah will be connected. Amen. There is nothing called the third coming. Because the first coming even never came to us. He came to Israel. Amen. Then we have a mysterious coming that came to Paul that was never prophesied. Then the body began. When the body comes, the body gets raptured. Now tell me where Elijah comes in. When Paul, when he was preaching, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. In Acts chapter 20, he says, I have not shunned to tell you the whole counsel of God. Amen. You look for Moses in the body of Christ, you won't find him. Amen. You look for Elijah, you won't find him. You look for Moses in the mystery of Christ, you won't find him. And he turned the heart. Turned the heart for what? We are not restoration people. We are new creatures. There is nothing to be restored to. Amen. Amen. Is 
Israel have a land physically to be restored to. Israel have a faith to be restored to. Because they never captured the first coming of the Lord. Now Elijah will come and point to them. And that's why they will say that group in the upper chamber, 3,000 with the apostles, the 5,000 and the others who were scattered in Cappadocia, in Bithynia, in Asia, the one that James wrote to, the one that James John wrote to, Jude wrote to, Hebrews wrote to, Revelation wrote to, that group that were there will be the fathers of the new group under Elijah. It won't be very hard for Elijah to turn the hearts. Because Amen. that will be now an omega looking at our alpha. Amen. But you are the secret between alpha and omega. Amen. You are not omega, you are not even alpha. Amen. Alpha and omega is the language of Israel. Amen. You can't be alpha, where were you before? I want to tell you, you are not there, you've just come. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Amen. You are not Alpha. Amen. You are not a manifestation of Alpha. The manifestation of Alpha in what you call the New Testament has pertained to the coming of the Messiah is the little flock. Huh? Little flock or spiritual Israel or renewed Israel. But in the future it won't be renewed, it will be restored Israel with all the privileges. Because this little flock was called the remnant. But Paul says in Romans eleven twenty six, 26, So all Israel shall be saved. Whew. Did you get it? Amen. First coming, Elijah. Amen. Second coming, Elijah. Amen. Am I just saying or have proved that Jesus said there are people here who will see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. When the Son of Man comes in the kingdom, Elijah must be present. Amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said unto him, to, said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go. Aha! Uh -huh. So when this man. So Jesus is going to come in a cloud, and there were two men standing there. There were two angels. Are we together? On a man transfiguration, Jesus is coming, and there are two men. The Lord Himself shall descend the south. Are there two men there? Are there no two prophets there? Are there two angels there? We go to the book of John. When Jesus resurrected, there were also two angels in that open sepulchre. And these two men have always accompanied him. They were there at the resurrection. They were there at transfiguration. They'll be there when he comes in the kingdom. But these men, you can't get them anywhere in the coming rapture. They are not enjoined. There is no Elijah. There is no Moses connected to the rapture coming. The second coming takes place seven years after the rapture. Let's go. You remember we are in Revelation 1-7. And you guys, what is wrong with you? Why don't you remind me they said something? That's what I, would, I thought this would look like. Time you say it's something you had forgotten. What makes you think I can't forget? Let's read this. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants which things which must shortly come to pass. Things that must shortly come to pass. Who's being shown things that must shortly come to pass? Why is indeed Paul Why is indeed Paul? Paul is the messenger under the mystery of Christ that was hid. John is under the mystery of God that was declared unto his servant, the prophets. Amen. 
Because they missed the revelation of Jesus, now this is future. The revelation of Jesus. The apocalypse of Jesus. The unveiling of Jesus. And then it says, verse 7, I want you to look at the kind of Jesus that is coming for them. I know where you are. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And even they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wait because of him, and because of him even so. Amen. I want to ask a simple question. If this Jesus comes, is it possible for those who pierced him to see him? <laughs> so, Muran is asking, where are they? This kind of coming that John saw was so close until John broke into this when the people that had crucified Jesus were still alive. That's why he says down here, Things that which must shortly come to pass. Come to pass in which sense? When you have got 2,000 year period, putting it and talking about the coming of the Lord, you are messing it up. The coming of the Lord, which is called the second coming of the Lord, relates to Israel according to the calendar that God gave them. So the coming of the Lord is not the same as it is to you. For them, they were given 69 weeks that were fulfilled. And there was a degree given. In the book of Daniel, chapter, chapter 9, verse 25 there, it says, from the time the commandment was issued for the building and restoring of Jerusalem, from that time shall be so much amount of time. Then we go to the book of Ezra, commandments were given in building Jerusalem, the temple. Amen. There are two or three places in the book of Ezra. But this one starts counting from the building of the city and the streets. And that one can only be found in Nehemiah chapter 2, or right there. You can check it out. So from there, when you count from there, do you understand where I am? Amen. You know when you look at the book of Nehemiah, the way it's arranged in the Bible, and you look at where Daniel is, you think Daniel was before Nehemiah. It's just arrangement. Daniel was before Nehemiah. Because Daniel prophesied things that Nehemiah did. Building of the temple under Israel and building of the streets. From that time, listen to me, from that time to the coming of the Messiah would be exactly 483 years. And that took place on Palm Sunday when Jesus rode from the mountain. And he was supposed to be presented to Israel as the king to fulfill Zechariah 9 9. Tell the daughter of Zion, thy king is coming. That king coming, that scripture, he actually came. But was suspended because something happened in between in the calendar of God. So when he came at that time, look at the moment God had given Israel. They had, been, they had left the land to stay out there for 70 weeks. When Daniel started repenting and praying, then Gabriel came. When Gabriel came, he gave them another 70 times 7 which was 490. Why do we call it years? Because there is another scale that God uses. When the children of Israel went searching for the land for 40 days, and they came disbelieving the promise, God told them one day shall stand for a year. From that in the book of Numbers, we use that to calculate 490 to give us 490 years. One day, for a year. There are many days there. When you take those days, you multiply by 360, which is the lunar month, not the solar, of 365 and a quarter and a half and the leap year. No, just 360 days. 
Because the children of Israel calendar is 30 days. From that time, you are having a king. Hallelujah. Who has come according to the scriptures and is riding on the ox. That was the last prophecy shortly after John. When John came, they were not expecting any prophecy. Because Elijah shall truly come and restore all. But I tell you, Elijah has come. So when Jesus is telling them Elijah shall come to restore all, was he talking to you? What is it you are supposed to be restored to? You are not even saved, and you are coming with, the, he's going to restore. Restore you for what? I sent a young man, I talked to a young man, I said, I want us to take some of the things that were said in the seven sealed book. I want us to remove one by one, and then you look at the seven sealed book, it will lose to be sacred. Because you say, I want us to remove, I want us to remove, um, I want us to remove some things because they were taken from another book and called Revelation. I want to remove that, we put it here, remove that, put it here, remove that, put it here, remove that, put it here, and then read that book. You'll find whatever that is in that book is a shell. There is nothing. This is the book I read. And even I can open for you this place. I think it's, I, I, I'm not supposed to right now. You see this page? That is page, page 63 of Larkin. All these words there are found in the sixth seal, word for word. Comparing Revelation 6 and Matthew 24. It is called Comparisons of Christ's Olivet Discourses and Revelation 6. When this man was preaching, preach the first seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal. When he got to the sixth seal, he started comparing. When Branham started preaching first seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal. When he got to the sixth seal, he started comparing. Word for word. Yeah? This man was born in 1850. He died in 1924. So when you attack this part from the sixth cell, the excitement that we had, that wow, the sixth cell, everything from the first cell can be found in Revelation in Matthew chapter 4. Termine. That is French. You understand what I'm saying? The thing that really excited us when we read the sale book and said, can you think about the white horse rider? It is put here. April 4th, AD 30. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciple came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, you shall not see... Do you see these things? Verily I say unto you, they shall not be left here one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown away. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of their coming and the end of the world? And then Jesus takes the entire Matthew 24 to talk about the coming. That was not the rapture. Can you guys go home and study Matthew 24? Then he started comparing the first seal. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that you man this, no man deceive you, for they shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Revelation 6, 1 to 12. And I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of a thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come see, and I saw, and behold, a white horse rider. These things I'm saying is word for word in the seal book. Then he comes, compares Matthew 24, verse 6 to 7, to second seal, Revelation 6, 3 to 4. When he goes to Matthew 24, verse 7, he goes to the third seal, Revelation 6, 5 to 6. When he goes to Matthew 24, verse 8, which is pestilence and death, he goes to Revelation 6, 7, 8. When he goes to Matthew 24, 9, 13, the fifth seal, the, mat the martyrs, he goes to Revelation 6, 1 and 11. When he goes to Matthew 24, verse 14, and the gospel of the kingdom, 
shall be preached to all the nations, then shall the end come. That one is not found there. Because the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached again. So Matthew 24, the whole of it equals to Revelation chapter 6, the whole of it. And Revelation chapter 6 has the Antichrist coming, riding on the white horse to deceive many. The many here is not the Gentiles. That the people expecting the Messiah for the first time, and he came, it will be the second time, they will be deceived. When they enter into a covenant, they will be deceived. Hallelujah. Amen. So when he says, and shall deceive many, it's not you. It is the people looking for him. Amen. Hebrews 8, 20, 8 or 29. Can you read for us? Every eye shall do what? Shall see him. And those who pierced him. Behold, he cometh with clouds. That is not the rapture where every eye shall see him. And when he says, as the light shineth in the east and is seen in the west, it is not the west of the world, it is the west of Israel. He was telling them about how the lightning flashes in Israel. Amen. Don't start come and say, you know civilization travel with the sun. You know man enoyako. These people were expecting Jesus. They were told, you will not be told he's in the chamber, he's on sunset. No! As the light! Every eye shall see him. Amen. You people in Israel, he gave them sayings pertaining to Israel. Amen. You see very well when the sun, when the, 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 the sky is dark, you know it's going to rain. You've not discerned the signs of your time. The coming of the Son of Man, you will not be told he's in the chamber. You will not be told, shall we go to Tucson? No, as the light shined in the east. He was not addressing the world. He was addressing Israel. Amen. So when you come around and you say, a civilization traveled with the sun. It has gone, now we are in the west coast. Now the west coast, the way he appeared, he will appear. My friend, this is not even the coming of the Lord. If it's the coming of the Lord, why are you here? Does it appear to you there are two? Does it appear to you that the same cloud, but one has the eyes, another one doesn't? Do you know all of us who wanted the one that has the eyes? We did not realize someone came and superimposed it and gave it now that has the eyes, but it's exactly the same cloud. What happened to this cloud? It had eyes. Someone messed with it. And after messing it, he gave it to him. And then he stood and said, can you see his eyes? Can you see his beard? Glorified Jesus with the beards? Oh, I'm asking you. Glorify Jesus with the beards? Is it the same cloud? It is, isn't it? Except one has the eyes. So the question would be, which one appears in the Life magazine? I have it in my house here. A brother sent me, although it's very crispy. Does no I have no eyes. Someone did something and put the eyes there. I want to ask you, according to Matthew 17, which one is Matthew 17 here? If this was Matthew 17, then we've missed the rapture. Amen? Amen. And if this is 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, who went there and took the picture? A scientist taking a picture of the secret coming of the Lord? Then it's not secret anymore. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. If a scientist took a picture of the coming of the Lord, then the words of English lose meaning. I should preach the Kilu in Kiluya. Nisiri Tawe. If a scientist can take a picture of the coming of the Lord and you say this is the rapture, it is not a secret coming. And if this is the second coming, Israel wouldn't be having prime ministers. We wouldn't be having Kenya. We would be having Matthew 25. Behold, he coming with cloud. Every eye shall see him. Has every eye seen him? Has the tribes mourn? So what is this? 
This is what? Lies. No coming of the Lord right there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. We are talking about the rapture coming and the second coming. Amen. The second coming, every eye shall see him. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and the nations shall mourn. And another coming in secret. If it is secret, why did the sign take a picture of it? You message preacher. You love the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Where do you belong, brothers? Is that the coming of the Lord? Because this is preached as the secret coming. Do you know that? If it's the secret coming of the Lord, my brother, and our son, he's even saw it, it's not even a brother who took a picture of it. McDonald took a picture of it and he was wondering what is this? He took a picture of it. I talked to another brother yesterday. I told him, you bring message, that message called, it is the rising of the sun. Show me a place in that message where a cloud is mentioned. When they took this cloud and they put it on the back side of the sale book, that was impersonation because in the entire sale book, no cloud is mentioned. Because he even didn't know it existed. Why did they take the cloud and put it on the back of the book? Isn't it a false testimony? Yes. Because it's not even mentioned. We have the time and the season when it was mentioned. And it was mentioned because someone took it to him. So when people want to say this is the coming of the Lord, there is no coming of the Lord there. The coming of the rapture will be a secret. Behold, I tell you, a secret. Amen. We shall not all die, Amen. but we shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. Is the coming of the Lord different from the rapture? Yes. The rapture is coming for you. Amen. You wanted to read for me Hebrews 11? What does it say? Hebrews 9, 28. What does it say? So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear at the second time without sin unto salvation. Those who are looking for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. What will they be looking for? They will be looking for he will appear the second if he comes, are you looking for salvation when he comes? No, you are supposed to be saved when he comes. Because Jesus is not coming to to take people that he has not worked on. Amen. Ephesians says that he might present to himself a church without spot or wrinkle. Amen. By the washing of the waters by the word. Amen. And then he's working on that group of people. Amen. When he works on that group of people, those are the ones he's coming. He's not coming to prepare you. You are prepared by the message of the gospel of the kingdom, Amen. the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. When you receive him on your altar, Amen. you receive Jesus in the sky. Amen. We receive Christ on the altar. We receive Jesus in the sky. Amen. He will not put his food on the ground. Amen. Good. Papa, he is carrying some jams around you. There used to be a brother who came from Congo. Those are the guys who have really brought a lot of disgrace. And putting a cloud on the chest and saying every eye is seeing him. You remember 1994, Murano, you remember that? That every eye has seen him. And the people don't ask, why are we not weeping? <laughs> and when the nations shall weep, the rapture will have taken place because now the point of focus will be the nations. The nation will be angry. So the question, I would want to ask you a question. These two comings, both of them, do they have a preview, a rehearsal, or a dark town? We see the coming of the Son of Man in the kingdom has already been seen in Matthew 17. Mark 9, 
Luke 9, we want to see how the rapture will look like, apart from the shout, the voice, and the trump. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12. We've been deceived long enough. We are not playing with the scriptures. And you are not going to intimidate us. You are calling us intellectual because you are lazy, you can't study. So when we bring this scripture and that scripture, you call it intellectualism. Because you are emotional, you can just say, add faith and virtue. When you go to patience and you lose patience, when you more then you start building it. You are so shallow in the scriptures that when people come with the scripture after scripture, you call us intellectual. The Bible says, study. Amen. Study. Amen. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. There of deception. Yeah. And I want to tell you one of, the, one of the good things that I like. People are never the same since. Yes, because when you want to quote something, and one of your members had Simon reading it from from Larkin. Sevenfold glory of his person. When you want to say, the prophet said, someone sits down there and says, mm. says, now the prophet says, the things which thou hast seen, the vision. When you go to God, the sevenfold glory of his it is also in the church age. When you want to go to the 24 elders, they're right here. When you can't want to go to the throne, he's right here. When you want to go to the sins, right here. When you want to go firing a rocket, right here. When you want to go to the future home, here is a deep revelation. Here is a deep revelation. So when people know it's right here, you want to call it a Freemason who made a book. He died in 1924. Go even in the Baptist, you'll find that he was right there, a preacher. God bless such a people who study the word of God without saying, thus says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Someone who preached something and said, you have a right to choose to believe it, but this is the way I see it. But he didn't say, he didn't invoke the name of the Lord. And here is a deep revelation. And then you read the next thing, he's right here. I didn't sit down someone to tell me. What happened was I was reading, someone sent me the other book on my email in 2019. And while I was reading, because I love reading, I came across the fact that it is, has got all four sides equal does not mean it is a cube. There is another geometrical shape whose sides are the same, the pyramid. I say it just a minute. This sounds like what I read somewhere called, here is the deep Revelation, paragraph 366. Then I went down. It is down from Florida, Florida, Mississippi, Port of Maine. Frankly, it's half the United States. I measured it last week. But this one didn't say he measured it last week. When I said that, when I got there, what I did was, now Simon, this is an assignment you need to do. Now check any other thing that has authority that you've embraced and find out whether this man, what he said about it. The first thing I did, I moved to the seventh sin. Because that's the one we've swam in. Judges build, beat one another, you don't have the seventh sin we have. I want to see whether he said it. And then he said, it is like firing a rocket. Ah! And it's like firing a rocket. It puts on our ministers. Oh. It's like firing a rocket. It puts on seven stars. Here, can I read it for you? Yes. In this book. Now we must not forget that the seventh seal includes all the happening during the sounding of the trumpets and the pouring of the vials so to extend down to the ushering in of the millennium. Do you know where I am in the seventh seal book? To illustrate a rocket fired in the air, 
may pass into seven stars, and one of these stars into seven other stars, and one of the second group of stars into the third group of seven stars. So the seventh seal includes the seventh trumpet, and the seventh trumpet includes the seven vials. You know what I did? I laughed like a fool. I was no longer surprised. So remove that. And then you stand on the pulpit and say, it's like firing a rocket, the prophet revealed. No! And you young man who was listening to me, praise the Lord. I love with all my heart. When you hear that, Nyamesa, just keep quiet. <laughs> just know he's not telling me the truth. That's what you're talking about. So if I've read that, that is in the online. When someone quotes it in your church, what do you tell him? Then it becomes very hard for a pastor. True. Because when a pastor has got like young man like Onesmus who had already come across this and very quiet with them. And then I'm reading this and Onesmus is quiet. He'll come here and read the song and say, God bless you, let us, are you happy for the word of God? But inside of him, a conscience is saying, but what you read, you all read it. It is not in the message. What are you going to do? You brother don't defend a kingdom. Tell the truth whether people remain true. Let them be. Amen. Amen. If people will leave, let them leave. Amen. But your conscience when you are on a bed, you say, but I told them the truth. I asked another pastor that I gave this book and I gave with another one. If you read this book that I found in this book, will you still bring the seven seals are divine? If you read the comparison of the sixth seal with the Matthew 24, will you say it is the revelation? You will only ask one simple question. If the angel came down, what did they tell you? Because you said the angel coming down is a result of the seals. But it's already here. You angel, did you come down to say, go say what is in the book of Lacking? I need to meet you one of these days. And then you will confirm if you said that. You see, when God came to God, when the angel came to Gabriel, he never told Gabriel things that had been written. I've come to show you what is noted in the scripture. If someone can say these things without angel visiting him, we should get much more when the angels come. Amen. If this man never claimed a cloud, never claimed an angel, but he said them, God bless his soul. Everything he said may not be exact. It's only God who is exact, isn't it? Amen. But he contributed the building of the cause of God. Amen. But he never said, and God showed me, go to Jeffersonville and reveal the sins for God. He never said God told him. He just preached like a minister, preaching. Because a minister already has an authority. Amen. Go preach, you have an authority. When he ascended up to heaven, he gave gifts unto men. Amen. Amen. Yes. The second coming, I told those things, it's just like tearing a scientific thing. Those people carrying the charms in their body. You know, that people some of you, the, the Saburi, what happened? Are you still here today? Oh, that's the reason how you have diabetes. All the people who have diabetes were well, Isoma Saburi. <laughs> now you are going to die. All those who died were well, Isoma. Don't you? Who's the key for Buana? Simon Shivaka can even die tomorrow, but the cause of Christ will go on. Yeah. I'm not the carrier, the other people will carry it everywhere. If my wife got widowed be, because I've died, she'll be widowed like any other person who's been widowed. Yeah. Waiting for the coming of the rapture. Amen. Don't scare people see what happened to them. All those things that have happened to people, were they believers? He's no, no. sending us anointing of death, see what happened. Even if all of us die today, the truth remains, the rapture is different from the second coming. Amen. The gospel of the kingdom is different from the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. We are not going to fear. You can build as many scandals as you want. Amen. You can build and say he was given money. You should have said someone who gave you money must have really taught him. You know the way he's preaching. 
He also sat him down. You know, even stored about the rapture and the second coming. He told us about Acts chapter 7, verse 56. Jesus standing. And the Colossian Jesus sitting. These people don't just give him money. They also sat him down. And this man must be faithful. Amen. You can be given three million. You go somewhere and people want to support you. You, you are given three million to build a church. But the members of your church will say we are given a million to build the church. Uh -huh. So what does that concern you? This is our church. Amen. Don't we have gone through with the records of how we did the contribution? Amen. Don't you have it? Amen. You want to scare us? We are not scared. Amen. We are saying, come on, come on. Preach the scriptures. Amen. Don't preach this nonsense here. Amen. And scare the people. This church in Eldoret must not be the only church. Amen. There are other churches Amen. and they can come preaching Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you wherever you are man of God. Amen. We are preaching the gospel. We know you have got a lot of problems. Amen. People abuse you and call you names and tomorrow they are saying come and pray for me. Just go. Amen. If they abuse you and call you names and tomorrow they say come pray for me, go pray for them. Amen. This is a part of the package. Amen. Amen. That's what we are talking about, brothers. What are you standing to lose? We lost the world. Amen. Because there was another overcomer, Jesus Christ came. Amen. God give you boldness. Amen. Amen. And God give you life of God. Amen. God give you the supernatural that goes together with the truth. Amen. And I've never told you we are the best. Never. God's church is the best. We are a part of it. Amen. And the rest are everywhere. Amen. Go to India and all the places. Yes. Those are the people that Jesus died for. Amen. Brothers, this is the truth of the matter. What does it say in Matthew 24? Mm. Second Corinthians, yes. We, are, we shall also go to Matthew 24. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We, what are we looking for? If you remember very well. We are looking for these two comings if each one of them has a preview. We saw there was a preview of the second coming which is called the Son of Man coming in the kingdom in Matthew chapter 17. We want to look to a preview. Someone who also tested it. Of the rapture. It is not expedient for me Doubtless to glory. Hallelujah. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. A new man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such a one was caught up into the third heaven. Was Paul caught up in the third heaven? Amen. Are you going to be caught up? The same word used Amen. in the Solon and we shall be caught up. Amen. Was Paul caught up? In the third heaven? Amen. What did he say? And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into the paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Paul saying, Kuna mutu mungine na jisifia. I may not be nothing. I may not, I may not have this and the other. But there is a man I met. Amen. It is him who was translated in the third heaven. Amen. That was the prefigure, a preview of the raptured people. Amen. The man who came with the mystery of the rapture was also gone there. Amen. Simon Peter who came with the mystery, oh, with the keys of the kingdom, he also saw the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Why don't you say amen? Amen. Did Simon, did Simon Peter have the keys of the kingdom? Amen. Did Paul have the revelations and the visions of the mystery? Amen. Were these people candidates of the devil? Yes. Did Jesus Christ say, Simon Peter, the devil wants to save you? Did Paul say in the same place, and I will send, it will send unto me the messengers of Satan because of the abundance of the revelation? Amen. If I was the devil, I would go for Paul. Because Paul, you are preaching what was hid. Before the foundation of the world, what was never known to the sons of men, you are telling them of a sacred mystery resurrection. You are telling them we shall not all. If I was the devil, Paul, I would come for you. If I was the devil, Peter, I would come for you. 
Because I want these kingdoms. I told Jesus in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, if you bow unto me, I will give you the kingdom. And Jesus said, I will not take it. Then I see him giving Simon Peter the keys of the kingdom. This Simon Peter is the one who is going to open the kingdom. Eh? Then Simon Peter comes in Acts chapter 2, preaches the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. People receive the kingdom. They receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts chapter 8, Acts, Acts chapter 10. That's the man that needed to suffer. I want to ask you a question. If you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you believe Jesus Christ was supposed to come and deliver the kingdom of the children of Israel, and then he dies, you would be devastated. But when you stand and he is resurrected, you would be very excited. Amen. Even if you meet someone tell you I'll kill you, you say I met him, I saw him die, I ran away from him. Amen. But he also rose again. Amen. Then that will take away fear out of your life. Amen. Amen. I was being told of a story of a sister that lost her child. And where she was, she was the only person that was a believer there. And the people who are there, some pastors say, hey, hey. she usually says she goes to church, she goes to her, let us see what happens. And the sister was there, there were two sisters living in the same place. And during that day, God just inspired another brother from another brother. You've not seen that sister for a long time. Why don't you go see her? The brother leaves and another one, another one, about four or five brothers. They come and they, suddenly they meet in a junction, a place. Where are you going? We've not seen Sister so and so for a long time. They didn't know she had lost her baby. When these brothers were coming, walking in the gate, and the sister was sitting there alone with the baby, people are watching to see. Sister, when she saw the brothers, she left that baby and ran and hugged. You couldn't tell the, bro the sister, don't hug the brothers. She realized these are really my brothers. Amen. It is God. Amen. Let no one scare you. Amen. That when this will happen, what will happen to you? Don't Amen. believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't allow someone to scare you. Amen. You tell God, this is your word. Amen. 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 Live right among the people that hate you. Amen. And ask if your heart is bitter, God, give me Manasseh. Amen. I want to forgive. Amen. And if it's hard, ask God. God, I want to be a Christian. Sometimes someone can provoke you and you behave in a way that is not good. When you sit back, you say, God, that person who came out that day is not good. I don't want that man. Kill him where he is. I wanted to manifest a better life than that life I manifested. Yeah. I want to be more of a Christian. And I want to love everybody. But I want to hate deception. Because you hate deception too. Praise the Lord. Amen. The book... The Old Testament has more of the second coming, and that's why people mistook. This message is important if you are listening. The second coming and the rapture coming are separate things. There are a lot of things we shall come and pick them over. But I want to read a few scriptures here, because we've finished our two-hour period. We've already finished our two-hour. We want just to look for a place we can stop. You can write this down. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. When Paul was talking about the coming of the Antichrist, he said the Lord shall destroy him with the brightness of his coming. That coming is not the rapture coming. The rapture coming, the enemy is not destroyed. Is that true? But there is the coming, when he comes in the kingdom, he shall destroy. He is the one who will take that old serpent and bind him a thousand years. But during the rapture coming, there is no binding of the devil. The devil is, let me just tell you the two bindings of the devil. Can we read that together? This is a very interesting binding. Are we there? Hey, my goodness. Is it second? Is it second first? No, it's second. Second chapter 2. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except they come a falling away first. That man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, 
who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is, he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You see, people used to think it is someone sitting in a Catholic church calling himself. No, the temple has to be constructed. And when the temple is constructed, as according to the first seal, the white horse rider will begin riding and will deceive many, which is the children of Israel. And when he deceives them, he will get into the temple and sit there as God. Did you understand? Where am I throwing the seals? Future. You are quiet because... Some people don't want to come to six for the purpose where Branham also said seals his future. They would rather remove it, and as they keep on doing it, they will remove that part. Because he admitted his future. Did I read you that one time? Yes, yes. six for the purpose. So the temple has to be built. After the temple has been built, this Antichrist will sit in that temple. But that will be after the rapture has taken place. So the temple will be built in the last three and a half years. And in the middle of the three and a half years, he will be thrown down from heaven. As it's written in Revelation chapter 12. And the people will come out of deception. Because there will be a calling, come out of her, my people. When these people violate the covenant, they will run to Judea. Did you get that? Amen. Matthew 24 covers all that. Let that one that is on the top of a hill not come back to take his house. Who is them who have got suckling children? Pray that your fly be not in winter. Do you have winter in Kenya? We'll come to see how prophetic that land of Israel is. We shall see the land we shall see the throne, we shall see the earth. Who has the power over the throne? Who has the power over the land of Israel? Who have got the power over the earth? And you see in those things you are not there. Huh? Yes. Let's read it says. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. It says there is a restrainer that restrains this man to be revealed or this devil to be seen. There is a restrainer. That restrainer is the Holy Ghost inside of you. Amen. That you can stand here and tell the devil you can't be in the while I'm still here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You have a restrainer inside of you. Amen. Oh God, I wish I could read King James. No, that was King James. I, I wish I could read NIV. Let me just look for NIV right here. You love the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. That is second what? Second Thessalonians 2, verse 6. Verse 5 says, Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at, he, at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but he who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Then the lawless will be revealed, whom the Lord will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Amen. Are you seeing this coming? Amen. Amen. It is a coming that has got the destruction of the enemy. I know many of you now, when you read the Bible, it becomes very clear. Amen? Amen? You have something in you that binds the devil. Amen. Now, you just have to believe it. Amen. And for them, in Revelation chapter 20, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, and in his hand he has the key and the chain. And he took all of the old serpent, which is the devil, and bound him a thousand years. That one had the key to bind the devil. Amen. But right here, the Holy Spirit in the people, Christ, 
The mystery of hope in you. Binding the devil. He cannot be incarnate. Because the restrainer. God bless you people with the restrainer in your life. Hallelujah. The restrainer is inside of you. He that restrains him. Holds him back. Or he that hindered him. I'm looking at you as you seated. Do you want to tell me you are such a powerful people Amen. that the devil can never, never Amen. be incarnate? Amen. You restrain him Amen. just like the moon. Amen. When the moon comes, the water in the seas pulls back. Amen. Even if you go in your well, in the day when the moon is full, the water in your well is down. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because it is a one that is all you. The darkness will not run away from you, Amen. but you shall rule the darkness. Amen. Even if the darkness is coming, Amen. things are just being seen in Switzerland, you will rule it. Amen. God has given the power to rule. Amen. The darkness may not run from you, but you will rule the darkness. You have the power of Jesus. Amen. You are withholding. Amen. You are restraining the devil. He cannot be incarnate. Amen. And by that we pray Amen. for every brother sick. May you be healed yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So sister in the hospital, the children of brother Alexander and any other person be healed because the restrainer is in your life. The devil can never cross the restrainer. He can never be incarnate in your life. The restrainer is holding. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap. Possessors of the restrainer. Amen. He that restraineth will still restrain him Amen. until he be taken out of the way. Amen. When he, I want to ask you, do you see the glory of the mystery of Christ? When the mystery of Christ is in force, no devil gets incarnate. Amen. But the, don't just say it's the Holy Spirit that is restraining him. Will they have the Holy Spirit? Yes. But instead the devil will be incarnate. But they will have the Holy Spirit. What is the difference? That's the mystery of God. This is the mystery of Christ. You picked it. The mystery of God, will they be sealed with the Holy Spirit on the forehead? Until when? Towards the end. That coming of Revelation 19. That coming of Revelation 19, when he will come to take that whole serpent and bind him for a thousand years. I'm telling the mystery of Christ has already. Let me tell you, the things you suffer in the body and discouragement should be normal things because you are in this flesh. But it's not because the devil has been given time. Look at Job. The devil had to go and ask for permission. Amen. And when he asked permission, he said, Can I go? He said, yeah, You can touch everything. That's not where the, the strength of this man is. The, sick, the strength of this man is in me. Amen. Tag the children, Amen. tag the wife, tag, and for the wife, tag the husband, okay? You job. Amen. Let's not just talk about the job. Amen. Take the husband or take the wife. Take the animals. The man is still holding. Amen. Because the one inside of him is connected to another one that is unseen. Amen. And it didn't matter how much you did. The man was tested by 17 Amen. things. Yeah. The 17 things tested Amen. that man. And I want to tell you prophetically, Job will be the nation of Israel. Amen. We can take Job as an inspiration. We can take Job prophetically. Amen. It's the nation of Israel. Look for the strength of this man. You can't find it. It's in Christ Jesus. Amen. The one that died and resurrected. Amen. You can't find me. The child of God cannot be found by the devil. Amen. The Bible says you are saved and hid in God by Christ. Amen. Or is it hid in Christ by God? Either. You are hid. Amen. Your very life cannot be seen. Amen. They are looking for your strength. They can't get your strength. Amen. And the devil has to go and ask for permission. And when that testing is over for that nation, hallelujah, Amen. then the nation comes in restoration. Do you understand? The nation comes back in restoration. But I'm telling you, I want to make myself a small job. When the testing is over, I come back in fullness. Double, double, double. I have to confess it for it to take place. Amen. That's what God is doing, brother. Amen. And I want to tell you that man called Samson, who was given the power. All the world is looking for the power of the nation of Israel. It will take a woman to deceive this man to look for the power. Amen. Is that in future? Yes. Was that woman and her parents given money? Yes. 
What was he given the money for? To look for the power of this man. And she kept on seducing the man. And then the man released his power. But God wanted to multiply his victory. I want to tell you when God wants to multiply your victory, he takes you for a bondsman for a while. You are in bondage, you don't have eyes. But God is making sure every demon is gathered to be destroyed. When God multiplies your victory, you've waited for your promise for so long. Oh, let me preach a little bit. You are waiting for your promise for so long. You are thinking, God, you've forgotten about me because you are in the third house. Where it looks you are forgotten. Amen. But God is multiplying your victory. Because in that house where Samson was, there were the lords of Acheron, the lords of Ashekelon, the lords of Ashekenaz. All were there. And when they were everywhere, then the man stood in the two pillars. He took Moses this side. And he took Elijah this side. That's the nation of Israel. And with a little child there, with a ministry that has just been born in the land, and he destroyed the people. God had multiplied his victory. Amen. There is a time when God uses to multiply your victory. Amen. Whatever you are going through tonight, whatever that is happening, don't give up. Amen. God is multiplying your victory. Amen. Amen. That's what God did. Amen. When God says, I want to multiply the victory of my daughters, I will make... I'll make it so hard. I'll make the doctor say it, it can't be done. I'll make people say, you, no, forget all about it. I'm multiplying your victory. When I do it, it will be more glorious. And God is a multiplier of the victory. When people come and say it can't be done, and God say it is not over. When Simon Peter goes to the fish, and he goes the whole night, nothing is happening. Then Jesus comes and says, go over it again. Go over it again. I was coming to multiply your victory. And Jesus wants to multiply your victory. Amen. Let's look for a place to finish. Hallelujah. I'm no longer going to the other. We shall deal with them later. We we'll want to go into Matthew 24, the all of it. We read all of it. We are not going there. We want to finish. But also when God is multiplying your victory, you may look like you are useless. You may sit in the gate God beautiful. And there is nothing beautiful about that gate. It's a gate of a beggar who should have been better. And everyone is seeing you, but God is multiplying your victory. Yeah. Because when God saved that man, 5,000 people were born in the kingdom. Yeah. And God would, wouldn't have saved him any earlier. Amen. The Bible says the man was about 44 years. 44 years means he started going there before Jesus was born. Amen. And there was only one gate to the temple. Jesus used to see him. And he sees him, he says, I'll not do it now. Amen. I want Simon Peter to get saved first. Amen. I want John to go to Mantle's vacation. I want them to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Those are the ones that will do it. But I know, I'll put you here. I'm multiplying your victory. You may not know what is happening. But one day, at three in Acts chapter 3, Simon Peter was the last one to come to the temple. Amen. And the man looked at him expecting some silver like yesterday. But I want to tell you for the man, that yesterday wasn't going to be like today. Something had changed in the realm of the Spirit of God. And the man was standing there expecting. But God said, I'm going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. God wants to do above. And when God does it, the Bible says, what does he do? Brother Murano, you remember? Well shaken. Pressed down and running over. When God gives, he gives abundantly. He gave us life abundantly. We have life abundantly. And there was a man right there waiting for silver. But God said, you're waiting for silver? I was only trying to condition you to receive. Because you are sitting in the right place. Place of the recipient. You are sitting in the right place. Amen? Amen. But I'm going to do exceedingly because I'm still working on other people who are connected to a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are alone here, but your miracle is, is this such a word called bilateral? Is that still English? It's not unilateral, but it's bi, bilateral. Amen. That my miracle seems to be delaying because it's not going to be a single miracle. Amen. It is plural. Amen. It is going to touch the lives of other people. Amen. And God is looking at this instead. He sees there are no 5,000. There are 500. He's going to add. Keep on adding. He is mad. That is my victory. Amen. Amen. 
Then he said, look on us. When they looked on him, expecting him, them, to give him silver, they say, silver and gold have we none. But in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. rise up Amen. and walk. Amen. And the man rose up and followed them in the temple. And when he followed them in the temple, Simon Peter stood on the podium and preached. And the Bible says, 5,000 people were added. Amen. My suffering is not a suffering. It's for the glory of God. Amen. There is something glorious connected to it. Amen. Just like the death of Lazarus. Is he dead? No, he's not dead. It is for the glory of God. Amen. Everything that happened to you that is negative is for the glory. Amen. My brother, there are 5,000 hidden somewhere Amen. connected to your miracle. Amen. People would fail if you never came. Amen. It is good you came. Amen. Hang in, in there. Just hang in, in there. Amen. Don't be discouraged. Amen. Your miracle is connected to another person. Can you imagine this person rising up and walking? If Jesus Christ healed this man, how many people would have received him? Maybe two or three. But Jesus said, no, I'm not looking at you, my brother. I've not ignored you in your, fourth, in your third house. It's a place where you are forgotten, eh? Isn't it? It's a place where people don't talk about your goodness. People even forget the good things you did to them. And then you sit down and say, you mean even so-and-so said this about me? Yes. He forgot all about you. But I'm going to tell you, amen. amen, when you go to the fourth house of your life, amen. all of us have got those four houses. Amen. When you go there in the house of power and majesty and glory, you know Jesus had all of them. Amen. Don't get me there, I've finished my message. Amen. When God is multiplying your victory, hold on in the gate called beautiful. Then you can come and now rename the gate. Say it now for real, you are now the gate beautiful. Amen. You are really a beautiful amen. gate. It was just a prophecy. I couldn't imagine you are a beautiful gate. Now you are a beautiful gate. I am whole. 5,000 are saved. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we receive the things you've given us in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your glory you've given us, Lord. We appreciate you, Father, for separating, dividing the scripture for your people. We raise, Father, your name on high, Father. We bless your people who are standing in, our God, in the gate, God, beautiful. Father, knowing, Father, our promises are different. Bless your people today, Father, for the glory of your name, Lord. Dismiss them with your blessing, Father. May those who are sick be released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the judge said, Amen. Amen.